Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Juice Baseball channel, and welcome back to another episode of the Toronto Blue Jays Legends Fantasy Draft Series here on MLB The Show 24. In the last episode, we started another season of Blue Jay Baseball, because in the last season, year two, we won the World Series. So the defending champs, then we go out in the season two offseason, pick up even more pieces to the team, and now we have entered season three, 25 and seven. We have absolutely dominated. This is way better of a simulation than I even thought was possible for us. Even though I know how good of a team we have, I still didn't think we'd put up these kind of numbers. I mean, we put up 24 runs in Cincinnati earlier in the, the month. I totally did not think that we would uh, be 25-7 and seven by May 1st. That is something that took me by surprise. Even though, like I mentioned, even though I know the talent that we have on the roster, it's just all the other teams in baseball have a lot of great talent as well. So it's not like we have all these 99s and 98s and 97s and the rest of the teams have 80s or anything. They have 99s, they have 98s, they have 97s on their team. Now, obviously, not as many as I have on my team, but they still got enough to be able to win a few games in the month of April, but apparently not. 25-7 and seven is where we are. We're going to get through all of May and probably a good chunk of June as well in today's episode so that we can get in the third episode or the next episode after this, we can get through all of the draft and the all-star game and the trade deadlines. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's episode. So if you go and enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club, and let's get this started, man. Let's get this started here. And we've got a jump in first game of the episode. Frank the Tank, the Big Hurt. Frank Thomas has got two RB or two home runs already in the game. We're winning 7-7 seven to seven against the Tigers. You know what? First game of the month, first game of the episode, we're jumping right in. Let's help Frank the Thomas. Frank the Thomas? Frank the Tank Thomas, the big hurt. All right, Frankie boy. Two home runs already today. I hit one with you in the last episode. Let's do it again. You got Bagwell on first. You're not swinging that, but that's a garbage pitch from Zach Greggy. You're not hitting that. Absolutely not going to even touch it. You're much smarter of a, of a hitter than that. That one you'll hit, and that one you'll send into left center field. Go, go, go. Ah, darn it. I thought I had that one. I really thought I had that one. That one felt good off the bat, too. They're going to give me another chance. Top of the ninth. Oh, look at that changeup. It was right there, too. They're going to give me another chance, and this time they're going to give me a meatball. That's a spicy meatball. And unfortunately, it's not even going to be a home run. It's just going to be a nice little base hit. Top of the ninth. Can we at least extend the game and win it? What happened? We lost 9-7. to seven. That is unfortunato. Aaron Judge also had two home runs in that game. The fact that I couldn't hit a home run on either of those two at-bats is very embarrassing. <laughs> Bo Jackson needs a triple for the cycle. Uh, you're better off doing it by yourself there, Bo. Uh-oh, George Brett sustains a torn ham hamstring, and he's out for two to three months. This is the second year in a row that that uh, George Brett has gotten injured during the season. This is why we brought in no more Garcia Parra in the offseason, was to fill these holes. I mean, we also have Elliot De La Cruz, but still, he's on the... Elliot De La Cruz got put in the minors, I think. But still, no more Garcia Parra was the guy that uh, we brought in to fill these holes, but I don't know, I mean, we might have to move on from George Brett, man. I don't know what George Brett's deal is, but he is always getting injured. Oh, actually, De La Cruz got hurt as well. <laughs> uh, Beltron, unfortunately, did tear his his finger ligament. He should be back so he can fill in uh, in center field. But he was having a killer season before he got hurt. That was a brutal injury. I remember that one. But George Brett, second time he's been, I mean, he only played 95 games last year. 95 games. He played really well in those 95 games, but only 95 games. And he's only playing 30 so far before he got injured again. So I don't know what we're going to do with George Brett. I do not know. Another scouting day, though. We've got Randall Hatch up to 85%. We've got 100% on Renee and 100% on Robert. So we will remove these guys. Renee could be a solid player. He looks like he's really fast. 
He's got really decent contact. You know what? Renee could be a solid player for us. We might take him. You never know. I mean, we only have one pick in this draft, and it's in uh, the final pick of the, of the first round. So whoever we pick, we have to be very, very particular because uh, we only get one shot. So we, we got to... We gotta, if we're gonna pick somebody, we gotta know exactly who we're gonna take, and we gotta make sure that they're the best player possible. So, we don't, oh, I didn't put, oops, I thought I put Garcia Parra in for both lineups, I did not. So, no more Garcia Parra, we'll fill in for both lefties and righties, and we'll keep moving on. Vita Blue's in a tough situation, tied at three, I believe in you, Vita. Somehow he got out of it, thank God. Clayton Kershaw on the Phillies is weird. But Bagwell's got a 10-game hitting streak. We win that game 7-2. Jeff Bagwell, again, he's got an 11-game hitting streak. We lose that game. But did he keep the hitting streak alive? Did Bagwell, did Buff Bagwell keep the hitting streak alive? No, he had two walks. So the hitting streak is over for Bagwell. That's kind of unfortunate. Piazza needs a triple. He's not getting that even if I don't play it. Gibson has a shutout. Come on, Bob's killing, man. Bob was such a great addition to the squad. I'm so happy we brought him in. Okay, so we get Randall Hatch up to 100%. He looks actually pretty solid as a pitcher. Randall Hatch looks pretty darn good. We need to keep on keeping on with starting pitchers. We'll probably scout this guy, Mariano Moreno. And then we'll keep the other guys in there as well. And we'll keep going here in the month of May on a little bit of a win streak. Garcia Parr is at the play. He's already got two home runs. Let's make it three. You know what? First time I get to use Nomar, Gar Nomar Garcia Parra in this series. Let's do it. All right, Nomar. You've already got two home runs today going up against Juan Martial. Or Marshall, however you want to say his name. I think it's Marshall. Ooh, late on the pitch. Late on the pitch. Super late. That was a fastball basically right up the middle. And I, uh, I was not prepared for it. But I'm prepared for this one. Garcia Parra. And I was early, of course. I'm overcorrecting. I was over-prepared for that one. I was ready for the second one. I wasn't ready for the first. Not swinging at that. Slider. One, two count. Come on, Nomar. You're not really known as a power hitter, but, I mean, you got to take advantage of the two home run day. Make it three, possibly. Have yourself quite the day. Nomar Garcia Parra is going to hit the third one. Santa Maria. That ball is out of here. Three home runs in a single game for Nomar Garcia Parra. Oh my word. Toronto does in fact love Garcia Parra. What an offseason addition. He comes in to be a bench role, a utility man. And then George Brett gets hurt. He sees his opportunity. He takes it. And he comes in and within like a first week of starting, he has a three home run game. Wow. Absolute insanity. And now Randy Johnson has a shutout going, I believe, in the big unit, slapping that big unit on the table. He gets it done. Blue Jays win. Garcia Parra with three home runs. That's a rare thing that I've done right there. I don't usually jump in and actually complete the three home run game when they give me that scenario. That's one of the rare times that I actually do it. And you can see that by earlier in the episode with the game against Toronto when they jumped in with Frank Thomas. I didn't have, I didn't get it that time. And you would think that out of anybody, I would be able to get it with Frank Thomas. But no, nope, I'm weird like that. Mariano Rivero in a, uh, Rivera in a tough situation. We win the game anyway. I don't know if he got the win or the save or whatever, but we loop. Bob Gibson finally lost the game. Oh, that's kind of crazy. Uh, Cal Ripken had, oh my God, we are just smoking baseballs across the, the border lines right now. Another two home run game for a player. This time it was Cal Ripken. We are 35 and 10. 36 and 10. My God, we're good. Are we like breaking the Mariners single season wins record good? I think they got 118. We're, we could be on pace. Another day of scouting though. Uh, Beckett Curtis, we've gotten him fully scouted. He's got really good contact versus lefties. Good vision. Arm accuracy, good speed. Looks like he's a decent fielder in the potential or in the future. He's a good utility guy. Uh, he could be a solid player. I'm, I'm intrigued by him. I don't know if I'd like hitch the wagon, hitch the wagon to him or anything, but he looks like he could be a solid, a solid player if everybody else is gone by the point that we have to take somebody. We'll put in Salvador Hernandez in his replace uh, and replace that Beckett guy. 
and then we will keep the other two guys there and continue scouting and simulating. Goose Gossage is in a tough situation, up by one. Canerco at the, the plate, we win two to one. Beautiful. W's all around. Joe Morgan needs a triple for the cycle. I'm just, I'm not going to be able to get a triple. It, they're better off doing it without me. And we are just cooking. We're cooking teams, man. Look at all these wins. We lost against the, the Red Sox in one game. We lost against the Phillies in one game. We lost against the Tigers in one game. Everybody else we've beaten. 40 and 10. 40 and 10. And we're not even leading MVP. <laughs> because for some reason, Edgar Martinez is hitting 424. What? I just noticed that. He's hitting 424 on the season, 520 OBP, 891 slug. Oh my God. No one. Okay. You know what? If he keeps this up all year, he deserves to win the MVP. That's an insane season. Ichiro is having a good year. 18 home runs. Ichiro not really a power guy, but he's killing the baseball. And then Thomas is right there. The Cy Young. We don't even have a guy in the Cy Young. Johnson and Bob Gibson are, are close, but Jim Abbott, the one-armed man is dominant I mean, he has two arms in the game obviously because he's a creative player but in real life one arm man and he's got an 8-1 record with a 2-3-4 i mean he's dominating man of course the yankees are gonna have two guys at the top of the board that are having just as crazy of a season as we have they're gonna probably deny us both these awards i would think and edgar's obviously winning the batting title or leading the batting title rob dibble is leading reliever of the year dominique Rivera, Rookie of the Year, and, I mean, Edgar's in position, very strong position, to win the Triple Crown this year. It's very possible. If he keeps up his hot season, he could be making some history winning the Triple Crown. But let's keep going. Let's keep seeing if we can get the job done. Bryce Harper, 4-4. Four to four. Andrew Moore on the mound. I gotta get in here with my man, Bryce. Bryce Harper in the City Connects. Takes the plate. Runner on first and second. Bottom of the eighth against the Cubs. Bryce Harper needs doesn't need a home run. I'd, I'd obviously prefer a home run. But just something in the outfield that doesn't involve a double play or anything like that. Just a base hit in the outfield. Scores one. Oh, pass ball. I almost went. I really did. I almost clicked the button to go. I panicked at the last second and didn't choose to do it. I don't... Who's on second? It's Bo Jacks. Ah, Bo would have made it for sure. Man, that's a mistake. That's my fault. I, I would have gotten rid of the double play opportunity. Oh... That's a really miss, a missed opportunity by me. And I checked the swing super early on that. Come on, Bryce. Lock in. Lock in. I got this. Bryce Harper just needs a base hit. That's all we need. Just a nice little base hit in the outfield. Scores Bo Jackson almost definitely. And hopefully could score Garcia Parra as well. Oh, no, I think Joe Morgan, or Joe DiMaggio, not Joe Morgan, Joe DiMaggio's on first. But it doesn't matter because that's a home run. Santa Maria! Bryce Harper with a three-run shot to right field. Forget about the, the base hit into the outfield. It's a three-run bomb by Bryce Harper. Giving the Blue Jays a three-run lead in the bottom of the eighth. I love Bryce Harper, man. Another great addition in the offseason. He comes in, and I, he's just got such a silky, smooth, pure swing. It's just so much fun to uh, to hit with him. And we can close the door and win the game against the Cubbies. Get the job done. Bryce Harper obviously is the MVP of the game. Three home runs in that game for Jim Rice, though. So it looks like he was just untouchable. But he could not get the job done. That's the problem with baseball. It can't You can't just win games with just one player. Not all the time, at least. Can we keep on moving, though? We lose that second game to the Cubs, but we have 41 wins by May 24th. That's kind of wild, actually. All right, so we're starting to figure out a little bit more about Salvador Hernandez. A lot of these guys have good potentials, but their overalls are going to be pretty low, which is understandable because they're, like, second-round picks. They're not first-round picks, really. But I'm going to keep them all in just to finalize all the scouting to 100%, all those guys, figure out exactly who, who we're looking at. And a dominal strain for Chapman. He should be out for a couple days, but that doesn't matter. He's in the minor league system. Cal Ripken Jr., one-to-one -one game. I believe in you, Cal. We couldn't get the job done. Ooh, little losing streak for the boys. Little bit of a losing streak. Josh Gibson. You know what? We haven't really jumped in with Josh Gibson. Let's play with the home run king. While I was loading in there, I saw that we lead Major League Baseball in home runs through May 25th or whatever, wherever, May 30th, whatever we're at. We have 125. 
home runs. That's pretty awesome. I'm going to send whoever was on second around home. Josh Gibson has a chance to get an RBI single here. Get in! He's safe. Oh, it was Cal. Cal Ripken is safe. Josh Gibson delivers the RBI single in the right field. And it's Joe Morgan. What's he got? What's Joe Morgan got? One out. Runners on the corners. Three to three. Morgan into center field. Bloops it. Blue Jays have the lead. Four to three. And that's a pass ball. Or that's a wild ball. Doesn't advance any of the runners. But look at that. We come in and we immediately get the runs that we needed to get. And they pull their pitcher for Lucas Sims. Ooh, Joe DiMaggio. Somebody else that I haven't swung the bat with really at all in this series so far. Another one of the new additions. And I got a little bit of it, but not enough. I got a little bit of They got Tatis. I got a little bit of it, but not enough. Just kind of off the end of that bat there. And it goes into right field for a fly ball. And it's Jeff Buff Bagwell to the plate. One of the best hitters we have. What can he do? Can he make some noise? Can he do some damage? Runners on first and second. 1-0 one one count. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Ooh, make that 2-0. Lucas Sims not controlling the baseball. What do you got, Buff? What do you got? Ooh. I kind of wanted to swing at that, but he would have just jammed me if I would have swung at that, I, I think. I might have been able to power that for a hit, but it's too tough to say. That was a good pitch, though. And then the slider takes it up high. It's 3-1. to one. Do we have the green light? I'm thinking we kind of do. We'll see what happens here. Green light. Oh, I got the green light, but I reacted too late. And now we have to have the green light. Protect the plate. Full count. Two outs. Bottom seven. Bagwell swings. Chips off a slider. Chip. Count is still full. Come on, Bagwell. You're doing a good job fighting and extending the inning, but I need you to actually get the base hit we need. And that's going to be a walk. I'll take that, too. Lucas Sims walks Jeff Bagwell. And it loads the bases for the big hurt. Come on, Frank. I missed a home run with you at the beginning of the episode. It was a meatball that I should have hit on both occasions. And the both times we had the, the opportunity to in that, in that game. I need to redeem myself here and get a home run. It'd be a grand salami. The grandest of all the salamis. But Lucas Sims is being very careful. He does not want to pitch to Frank Thomas. Understandable. But I'd rather he pitched to me. There we go. He finally caved. It's not a grand slam, but it is a two RBI single for Frank Thomas. Six to three. The Blue Jays have blown the doors open on this game. We were once down three to two. It is now three to six. Let's go. And now Bryce Harper with one of the beautiful, most beautiful swings in all of baseball. Can he add even more runs? Last time we swung the bat with Bryce Harper, we sent it over the wall for a home run. Can we do it again? I hope so. Harper, ay, 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 chihuahua. Why do I do this to myself? I make myself look so good sometimes, and I make myself look so stupid sometimes, and that was one of the stupid times. What an idiotic swing that was. Should never have chased that baseball. Fouling off another fastball. It is now two or one two count. Here in the bottom of the seventh, runners on the corners. Come on, Bryce. It's just Lucas Sims. He can't hurt you. Bryce Harper fouls off another pitch. That time a slider. Come on, Bryce. I believe in you. I believe in you. Bryce Harper in the right field. RBI single. Look at that, man. Seven to three. The runs just keep on a pouring here in Toronto. And now it's Mike Pizza. What's Piazza got for us? Oh my god, that was a meatball. It was an absolute meatball, and I just sent it for a single instead of a home run. That really should have been a home run. Frank Thomas slides in safe. Eight to three we lead. And look at Piazza just shrugging the shoulders. Like, what do you what do you mean? I just doing what I do, baby. I just do I just be doing what I do. And that's with the sliders, and that's with the steroids. The pizza man delivering. It's pizza time, baby. It is pizza time. Look at that. Oh, that's the thumbnail right there. We got it. We got ourselves the thummy. Pizza time. 
Pizza time! Look at that, beautiful. Absolutely picture perfect. All right, Cal Ripken, what you got for me? It's already eight to three. Can we add on even more runs? Ooh, I missed that. Missed it, missed it! Just a little bit. Cal Ripken Jr. One of the saviors, one of the heroes of the team in the postseason last year. Get down, get down, it will. It's another RBI single, it's nine to three. We came into this situation down by one, three to two. And now all of a sudden, we have jumped to a nine to three lead in the same inning. Oh my God, how did I miss that? I got too excited. <laughs> I got too excited about seeing that baseball and I completely just whiffed it. I don't know if I'll get a better pitch to hit than that. Oh, never mind. That was the better pitch to hit <laughs> than the fastball, and I missed that as well. That time I was super, super early, so I overcorrected in the worst way. And, ooh, lean into that bow. Come on. You got massive pythons for arms. Just lean in. That's not going to hurt you. Lean into it. I'm swinging at that baseball. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Santa Maria! You know how in the Sandlot there's a, a moment where Benny the Jet rips the cover, literally rips the cover off the baseball and the, the rest of the gang is, is like stunned and astonished and shocked that he actually did it. He, he broke the baseball, he ripped the cover off it. That's what this swing with Bo Jackson reminded me of. Just the pure ferocity that Bo let out with that swing. I mean, it was just unbelievable. You could feel the power that Bo put on that swing. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. They pull uh, whoever the, the pitcher was. It might, was it still Lucas Sims? I don't know. It might have been. They pull him for Whitey Ford. This game has gotten severely out of control for the White Sox. I still can't believe that I shredded that baseball as bad as I did with Bo Jackson. That was amazing. 12 to 3. <coughs> Excuse me. Choked a little bit there. 12 to 3 is what I was going to say. And we have blown the doors off of this game. Machado hit a solo home run, making it 12 to 4. But yeah, congratulations, Machado. You did a good thing. It wasn't good enough. That's kind of like the Chris Paul hits the three to bring the lead down the like 50, whatever, whatever that meme is. That's kind of what that felt like. I mean, that game was out of control from the get-go. We win the game, and now we have no Mar Garcia Parra in a situation where we're down by two. Can we get the job done? No, we couldn't get the job done that time. The Panda, Pablo Sandoval, has injured his wrist. He fractured his wrist. He's out for one to two months. That's not good. Another scouting assignment day. We've got everybody up to 100%. This Salvador Hernandez could be a pretty solid player. We'll have to keep an eye on him. Mark Schnell. Looks like he's a really good defensive player, but nothing really else. He can't really hit that well. And he looks like he never will develop into a great hitter. And then Moreno could be a solid player. So we'll change all three of these prospects. And we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. We are getting down to the end of scouting. We only have a few more weeks of scouting left to go. So we are going to have to start choosing our guy. We only have one chance. So we got to start choosing who, they, who we want that guy to be and then uh, focus on them. So we'll scout a few more guys, and maybe one guy will surprise me. Maybe there's going to be one guy out here that's uh, above the rest and deserves to be scouted or deserves to be drafted by the Blue Jays. We'll find that out. That's why we're doing the scouting. All right, we now jump into the month. Man, the White Sox are a decent team. They beat us a bunch, didn't they? We went on a little bit of a losing streak there, and now we're still on a losing streak. I don't know what's going on here. We lost, yeah, look at these games. We lost two of three against the Tampa Bay Rays. We lost two of three against the White, or the Red, no. I was going to say the, the White Sox, then the Red Sox. The Cubs is who I want to say. Then we lost three of four against the White Sox. And now we've lost the first game against the Phillies. So we started out so hot the first two months of the season. We've kind of cooled off here a little bit. That's a little bit scary. <laughs> a little bit scary, but I think we're good. I mean, the Yankees are having a killer season as well. As good of a season we're having, they're having just as good of a season. They're right there with us. They're only a game back. So as much as we've been dominating, and I thought that we might be able to separate ourselves, I was wrong. Yankees are right there. And we play them two times here in the month of June. So that's going to be pretty uh, pretty intense. Can we at least beat the Phillies? I'd appreciate that. No, we get swept in two games by the Phillies. Not great. Not great at all. 
But then we go and play the, the Royals and we take three so far. Can't really figure out this squad. <laughs> we dominate. And now we, uh, we're not dominating. But we sweep the Royals. Ooh. Carlos Beltran should be back pretty soon. That is exactly what I want to see. That is exactly what I want to see because Joe DiMaggio is not hitting very well. At least he wasn't last time I checked. Where's he at? Oh, they already put Beltron back in. Perfect. Beltron comes back in. He only played like 12 games or something like that. But yeah, look at Joe DiMaggio. He's just cold. He's not really playing very well. He didn't really get the job done too much. But Beltron, when he was when he before he got hurt at the very, very beginning of the season, he was dominating. Now he comes back and hopefully he can continue that. I'm really hoping he can. All right, so we'll see how he does. Let's continue to get some wins here. Thomas, the base is loaded. We lose that game. We lose another game. Let's figure it out, boys. We lose another game. I don't like losing. Johan Santana injured. Another loss? That's four straight losses giving the Yankees hope. I know we're still early in the season, but I don't want to give the Yankees hope. Joe Jensen, or Joe Jansen, excuse me. Really good contact, really good vision, discipline, speed, stealing. He looks like a solid player. We could go after him. I wouldn't mind. I cer certainly would not mind. We'll go up to Victor Vasquez. We've got 85% 45%. We'll keep going on those guys. Can we at least pick up a win here? Yes, finally. We don't. We lose. We end the losing streak, but now we play the Yankees. This is a major series. We need to win all three of these games. We're down by one. Bo Jackson at the plate. Jose Alvarado on the mound. Oh, I gotta jump in, right? Here we go, Bo. Here we go, Bo. Here we go, Bo. In Yankee Stadium. Earlier in the episode, I destroyed the baseball with Bo Jackson. I don't need to do that here. All I need to do is just get a base hit. I mean, I would love to get a two-run homer and make it 4-2. to two. That'd be ideal, but a base hit will do. Ooh, Alvarado throwing inside. Low and inside on Bo. Fast cutter. Coming in at 93. What's Bo got? Bo over the top of a sinker. How did I miss that? Babe Ruth has 47 home runs, by the way. We are in June. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Okay, that's projected. Never mind, never, no, no, never mind. I thought we were witnessing like a legendary, historical, never before seen type of season. That's project. I didn't see the projected at the next uh, or at the bottom of there. Never mind. Don't get your hopes up like that. <laughs> Bo Jackson or uh, oh my God, that's gonna get through. It's gonna be a tie ball game. Bo Jackson delivers. Babe Ruth still has a normal amount of home runs. <laughs> I thought we were about to see like 70 home runs by Babe Ruth. Bo Jackson delivers, ties the baseball game, blows the save for Jose Alvarado, and they pull him for Dylan Floro to try to save the game or keep the game tied at three. But Josh Gibson does not want to do that. Josh Gibson wants to make it 4-3 to three or maybe even 5-3. to three. You never know. I would prefer 5-3, to three, but I'd also prefer 4-3. to three. I just prefer a lead. I don't care how it happens or what the lead is. Two low pitches so far. A little bit of a higher pitch, but I was early. I hate myself so much. Come on, Juice. Figure it the F out. Can't be making mistakes like that in crunch time. That's a grounder double play inning over. Oh, if I wouldn't have missed, missed the pitch the previous time, that wouldn't have been the situation. That's kind of annoying. That is kind of annoying. We're still tied. We are still tied. It's the top of the 10th. Runners on first and second. And only one out for Jeff Bagwell. What do we got? The 1-0 is low, or the pitch is low for the 1-0. Sinker. Come on, Bagwell. Avoid the double play, and we'll be good. He doesn't avoid He doesn't avoid the double play. It's a wild double play. The second baseman grabs the ball out of the air and then steps on the bag for a double play. I cannot believe my scenes here. And the Yankees walk it off. Unreal absolutely unreal i hate it here i want to be not alive right now oh how did that happen that's so wild the rarity of that type of double play is insane and he actually completed it luckily we come back and we win the next two games so we at least keep the yankees at bay for now but we need to keep actually winning games that aren't against the yankees 
We went against the Cardinals 21 to 4. Oh my god. We are putting up insane numbers. We are a legendary baseball team. Another huge game for Frank Thomas. He's got to be in MVP voting right now. I mean, I know he looked earlier and he was like third or something, but he's got to be like number one now, except for Edgar Martinez. He's killing the baseball. We win another one, 14 to nothing. 14 to nothing. We have won 36 to four in the, these first two games against the, the Cardinals. I know the Cardinals aren't having a great year. They're really, really bad actually, but still 36 runs in two games is unimaginable. We got Steven Ortega up to 100%. We're still scouting those other two guys. We'll change Ortega, and we will find out if there's any little sneaky little jabronis that we could scout here to end this scouting. Because we don't have that much time left. We do not have that much time left to worry about. So we'll scout maybe... Maybe... Uh, I don't even know. Phil Hernandez, I guess. We'll scout Phil Hernandez. We'll keep those other two guys in there, and we will keep going. The draft is in 20 days. 20 days. We will not sweep the Cardinals. We'll lose, but now we have to take on the Yankees, and we will take three of four, or three of four, two of three against New York. So we have taken four games out of the six which has allowed us to have a three and a half game lead over the Yankees. I'll take that as a win. I mean, it's not as many as I would have liked. Obviously, I would like to sweep them, but I'll still take it. Going against the Rockies, we win that game. Game two, we lose. Another scouting assignment day. One of the final ones we have. We get 100% on these guys. So we'll pick our final guys to scout, and this will basically be the end of the episode. We'll go Steven Sanchez, and we will go... Uh, with how about you whoever this is let's find somebody it's gonna be this guy right here yes you alan Be alan bennett it's not gonna matter we're not gonna draft him anyway unless he's a freak of nature we only have one pick so it's just we gotta be very selective thomas is killing it we win the game we take the series two to one over the rockies Final game of the month, we win against the Nationals. George Brett is back, hopefully. Simulate another game against the Nationals. They beat us. George Brett's back healthy. But do I even want to bring take Nomar Garcia Barr out? We need to see if Nomar is having a good year since he's been the starter or if he's having a really killer year. Oh, they already put George Brett back in. How was, how was Garcia Barr doing? He has 52 games played, 17 home runs, hitting three. Oh, forget about it. But they're both, oh my God, they're both playing really well. They both were dominating. But Garcia Parra in 52 games has 17 home runs. I got to keep him in. I got to keep him in. George Brett, I know you've been killing it. Or at least you were hitting very well. But Garcia Parra is dominating. I can't take him out. It'd be unconstitutional to take him out of the baseball or out of the lineup when he's hitting so well. Maybe if he cools down, we'll think about it. Beltron's got two home runs. We win two, uh, 10 to 2. That is where we will end the episode right there. We start July. Next episode, we will do the draft. We will do the All-Star Weekend or All-Star Week with the Home Run Derby, the All-Star Game, all that kind of stuff. Play with the guys that we have involved. And then we'll do Trade Deadline. That'll all be the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave it a like, subscribe to the channel, join the Juice Club. Thank you so much. Stop by and watch. I truly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.